Hey everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching today. So I thought I would start doing some more gift bags again. Lots of people have been asking me to do them. So I've got my little handbags book here. So today's inspiration is come from these ones here. They're Lulu Guinness from 2000. I was drawn to the shape of the, the top here and I thought that would work really well for the gift bag. I'm going to turn mine into a hinge effect just so it's a bit more practical. And then I've recreated a, a kind of the front of a, a building with some of the dies that I've got but you've got the little kind of handbag shop there you've got this oriental style as well I think they're really cool this is a lovely version as well with like a it was a hotel from Miami South Beach but anyway that's today's inspiration so let's start making it okay so you're going to want two pieces of 12 by 12 first of all if it's directional just make sure it's facing the right way up and you're going to score at three and a half and eleven and a half and then rotate and score at three and a half again so you want to do that on another piece you'll then want two pieces for the roof or the top of the bag that are 12 by five and a half along the 12 inch side you want to score at three and a half and then along the short side you want to score at one and a half and four and a half when i turned that there's your 11 and a half score line make sure that you when you turn it that's at the top so again one and a half and four and a half and then if you pop it back in here so you've got your half inch at this end you're going to score at one and two and a half down to the first score line and then at four and a half and ten and a half down to the first score line okay I'll remove this and then back to this one you just want to fold and burnish all of the score lines and then you do a little bit of cutting so you'll have your half inch tab on the right hand side along the bottom here you want to cut up That score line to the first score line and you'll have your score line here again just cut up to the first score line and then just take a little wedge off of each corner there so that's our tab and then you can take a wedge off of this square here as well and that way it will fold in nice and neatly So do that so you've got two pieces and then back to this one here if you grab a ruler and your stylus at the bottom of say this one inch one here you're going to score across and down to that base score line here this is a one inch trim it's going to overhang and again at the bottom of this score line here you're going to bring it down To that point there you can see I've joined that one down to the same point and then this one here down to that one okay so if I hold that like this you should be able to see those score lines and where you need to have that shape if I bring this one in here this is the one I've already done this is where we now want to start snipping into it so we create this shape because these pieces here are going to fold in and you'll see we start to get the top of the, the roof, that shape there. Okay, so with this one here, if you start to burnish those score lines, you have to pinch them around the top there. We're going to cut that away in a moment though. If you just start to put those all into shape make it a bit easier when you go to cut down all of these and again and then that very end tab like so so then you'll have this little square at this top corner here you just want to remove that completely okay like so i'm just going to take that score line away there and then again you're going to cut down the other side but this time you're going to go right across you're going to miss that main score line there you're going to come across to the next one that just goes down there if you fold that you're now going to remove that piece completely okay 
and then you're going to come across down to here and you're going to take all of that out so the little half inch piece and then that next section as well like so and then again working on that half inch tab i'm going to just take a little wedge off of there and off of there and there so you can see what we've got there just a little tab and then another smaller tab so you just need to do that on both of them so you'll have yours like this so back to this one here we want to add glue all down one of the tabs here and we're going to stick that one over the top so we've got one long piece so i'm going to use my stronger glue here so i'm just running that all the way down and just sit that just make sure this score line here the base score line lines up The papers I'm using here are by Studio Light, so it's double-sided. I did share this in one of my What Did I Get? It's called Industrial 2.0, and it's there. It's got um, it's a code I think S C R A P I N O eight. So you might still be able to see or find some sellers selling it. Okay. I'm just going to fold that in half again just to make sure it's all nice and secure and then open it up now this way and if you fold that tab over and just add some glue all down this one and then you can fold that right over and just tuck that tab under and you'll see the whole thing will fold flat and now if you flip it up this way decide which one which side you want to be the front or the back doesn't really matter for me because it's both you know the pattern papers the same and then you're going to add some glue onto your side tab and fold that one over i always like to fold this one down first because then it conceals these tabs in between the two layers so then when you look inside the gift bag don't worry too much about that at the moment then if you put your glue on this bit if you just get all the glue on then you can just get it in place there we go and then when you flip it over it just looks nice inside because you've got that big panel rather than the two side tabs showing and then you can just spend a minute just making sure that's all secure so now we can start putting the roof together so I've just pop some glue along those two tabs there you're putting it together very you know similar to the way we just done that and then this one here is going to stick over the top you might have to refold this line once it's all dry because it's got that tab underneath it now but you basically want this to be you know one long piece make sure this is nice and flush because this is what you're going to see this is the the kind of the trim that will overhang and then again if you flip it over Pop your glue again on this end tab here, both of those, and then fold this whole piece over. And again, just let that all line up. And you'll know it's all in the right place because it will be completely flat. Okay, so what's going to happen now is all of these corners are going to fold in. So that will be a valley. And then these will be mountain folds and you'll see they will join perfectly at the top to form that shape there now where you've joined it you're going to have to rework one of the sides because they're going to have you can see there it's got that piece now that goes over so just just fold it again just so it can all go back in on itself you'll see now we start to get the top of the roof just do the same on this corner here okay so once they're all folded in again decide which you want to be the front and the back so this is going to be the back for me so i'm going to add some glue onto these tabs here and basically we're just going to stick it together but again very similar to how we've just done the base so that one goes down first and then you're going to bring over this one here and then you're going to bring over this one here. In fact, I'm going to just cut a little wedge off of the side of this one here. 
think I'd already done it on that end there. Yeah, I had. So again, just, you don't want anything overhanging. If you get your hand in there like so, you want to make sure that it's nice and square. You want to have a right angle. If you just fold this one over the top, I know there's no glue on there yet, but it means you can get in. You see the shape that you want to have, and then you can just make sure this needs to be pulled right in. You want this to be nice and tight. It looks about right. And then pop my glue on the top here. And then close that over. So, so this is the front because I've got that nice side, whereas the back's got the join there. Flip that over. And just hold it here just until that glue's completely grabbed. So that will now go over the top of this, but it will probably be a little bit snug. And that's because we need to take a little bit from the back now to turn it into that hinge lid. So you will now want to snip down the back here. And then just fold that one. Okay, and then this piece, we're going to add glue and we're going to stick it inside that back piece there so I might just take a little bit off of the sides there just so it fits in nicely and then again I'm going to add my glue all down there and then if you fold it over like this it's going to be easier for you to secure it in place and that way when that hinge kind of goes over like so you'll see it's going to close on the front there and we're going to I think until the gifts inside this is quite a lightweight paper I'm using rather than a cardstock so I'm tempted to just add another you see this is actually quite flimsy I'm going to put some heavier weight cardstock to back inside there just so it's and use the clow. So I'm going to cut a piece that is um, eight, well, just under eight by eight and a half. I'm going to take a little bit off. I'm going to use a black just so it matches. OK, so I've just been playing around with all these pieces here. I've used the Beautiful Day window, which is this one with the little flower box there. You can see I've put the flowers in. I've used the Paper Discovery Elegant Door Builder Set for the street light. And then all of the flowers, the bicycle, the bunting, and all that kind of stuff is from this. This is, again, Card Making Magic, and it's the province collection. I think some of it's still available. I know the window is. I've used this on so many projects, and I've done another gift bag using those windows, actually. So I'll link that up here. But you want to kind of get the things that you want to use and just kind of position them because you want to make sure that your closure isn't going to come into that kind of area so I've got this strip here I'm going to have just a just a piece of um, velcro or hook and loop just to kind of hold that in place there I think I've done one by two I think if I do half of it stuck behind here up to that score line and then I've got another one and that's what I'm going to put the little hook and loop against. And I've got these black ones here. It's nice and strong. So I'm going to pop that one there. And then I'm going to pop my glue on there. And I want to make sure this is in the middle. So I'm going to open it back up. If you just flip it over like this, you'll be able to move it. You just want to line it up with that score line. Just make sure that you've got it in the middle. No, that needs to come over this way a little bit more. Yeah, three and a half you should have on each side. Like so. But now, it's always difficult to be able to push the hook and loop onto your 
because you want to make sure you it's quite easy to bring this down further than you need it to just line up with that one inch so i'm going to have to put it on its side if you line up this here so it's flush with the back then you know it's straight and then i can just kind of tack that in place like so for the minute and then i can carefully open them up there we go and now i know it's perfectly positioned and then you can push that down okay so until there's something in there it's it's going to be hard to really push down on that but as long as it's kind of tacked in place but now i can start decorating this so do something like that mind you i want them no that's it <laughs> they need to look even it would uh annoy me otherwise so i think i might do that and then have the bike kind of overhanging a little bit and do the bunting stuff so i'm going to put it on high speed now and get this all stuck down So that's what I've done so far. I really wanted to add the bicycle and the street light, but I just think it's a bit too much. You can see the side there. It looks really cute this way, so I, I don't think it needs any more. And then it's just the handle to add. So I've got this strip here, which is 12 by one. It was just a piece of scrap. I'm gonna pop a little curve into it. And I'm thinking about adding a couple of little, yeah, it needs a, a couple of little score lines. So, at either end if you just do a one inch score line so just flip it one and one and if you fold those outwards so you have this shape here like so and then that will stick onto the top here up to you if you want it quite far out you could have it really close together that looks quite nice as well i think i'm going to have it quite far out just so it can really hold any weight that's in here i moved it either end and then i'm going to probably put a little embellishment on the top so just try not to make a mess of it fortunately this glue does just rub away which is good just make sure it's nice and straight with the side here. It's hard because I'm trying to make sure I get it in the camera, but I need to see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to line that up. There we go. Let that dry. So I've just been looking at my punches. I just wanted to break up the black. And I've got this Dress My Craft scallop punch. So I've just cut this eight inch strip and then punch that scallop detail and I think it looks really cute so I'm going to do one for each side here as well so that will be three and a half you might have to just take it down a little no my dear yeah, three and a half it's still okay I thought you might have to cut a little bit in on it but I just think it breaks up that black on the roof I mean there's no reason why you couldn't cover the whole rooftop which I might I might do you'll see in a minute anyway but that's what I'm going to do now Okay, so I've just done it on the three sides there, but I do think that looks very cute. So I think I'm going to have a sentiment in the middle of the roof and then I'm going to use these enamel dots here for just a bit of decoration up on the top there. I might go for the green because that's actually quite a nice match to the green in the leaves. It just kind of helps, yeah, tie it all together. So I'm going to pop... I'm going to put some more glue underneath them, but just on the tops there, 
Sorry, I know that's really close to the camera, but <laughs> it's quite a tall uh, gift bag now. Actually, I'll give the overall dimensions at the end. But I'm going to get my sentiment stamped because it's going to be for a birthday. I know it's obviously a house, so it would be great for a new home and things, but this is going to be a birthday gift bag. So I've just stamped happy birthday. I'm going to pop a bit of foam on there. I have quite a lot of birthdays in December, so I kind of want to get these things done now. And then they're all ready to go so this one I have to hold it up here and there is the finished gift bag I know it's hard to get it all in but you can see and it holds itself really well I can hold it with the handle really pleased with this one so I'll just bring back in the book so we can have a little look I don't think I've done too bad actually there we go with this one here so that's my interpretation of the Lulu Guinness handbag, turning it into a gift bag. And I know the person I'm giving this to will adore this and I know that they won't throw it away either. So yeah, really pleased with this one. So I hope it's given you some inspiration. I hope you give this one a go. Like I said, you don't have to have it looking like a building. I think it's just a really nice shape. So I can imagine this in, you know, lovely pattern paper, nice gift tag hanging off the side I think it will look wonderful so as always thank you for watching I'll link as much of the product that I've used in the description box below and you'll see me again making a few more from this because I need to start getting organized because Christmas isn't far away so take care everybody and I'll see you all again soon bye